not at all. So yeah, this video that we're watching right now um, was filmed with a drone uh, last last winter, really, and it's a view of the Bushwick Inlet Park of the whole 27 acres. And this is actually um, approaching the inlet from the East River going east. And on the left-hand side is the northernmost part of the park. And this is the inlet. Um, and you can just see how sort of tranquil it is if you were a bird flying over the inlet during migratory season, maybe. <laughs> oh. Should we watch it again? <laughs> uh, the, Bush, the Bushwick Inlet Park is um, this 27 acre track of land along the East River and most of it is undeveloped as you can see from this video. And we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. But we thought you guys would get a kick out of seeing it um, from this point of view. This is the city storage site uh, building, this blue and white building here that was purchased in 2016. And coming up is the what we call Bushwick Inlet Park um, and the accidental beach here, which is probably where you go to uh, Bushwick Inlet Park if you do go to Bushwick Inlet Park because it's the only part we have access to right now. And people play soccer there. Now we're sw swinging along back down. So the whole, the whole park is going to be, well, it is 27 acres, but it will be developed um, over the course of time. And that's what we do a lot at Bushwick. The Friends of Bushwick in the park are great advocates for this. Um, here you've got Bayside and 50 Kent. Um, this is where there used to be big oil tanks and they were removed a couple years ago. And over on the left is a property owned by the MTA, this um, brick building along the north end of the inlet. And that's actually not a part of the park, but we are gonna be talking about that later as well. It's adjacent to the park and it's a very narrow strip. You can see it's only about 50 feet. Um, hey, Catherine, should we? Uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, thank you everybody for coming to uh, the third annual um, Bushwick Inlet Park Spring Convocation. Um, I, my name is Katherine Thompson and I'm co-chair along with Steve Chesler and I'm joined here tonight by all the other members of our steering committee and many of them you will be hearing from later. And we also have a very illustrious group of candidates um, that you will be meeting later as well. We are so fortunate that we have such amazing people that want to um, dedicate their, basically their lives to our district. So we'll get to hear about, we'll be introduced to them and we'll get to hear them talk later about um, Bushwick Inlet Park. Uh, basically, it was last year, a year ago, um, when we planned our third annual. And of course it had to be canceled because of the, um, the pandemic lockdown. And we didn't, we didn't, we had to cancel it. And we didn't even know people could have virtual meetings like this. And so we've learned so much over the year. We've learned how to Zoom. And I think really importantly, we've learned about how how important open space and park is to our spirit to our health and to our community. I mean, it was proven that parks and open space were the, were the places where we came together to congregate. And I know my, for myself, um, I, I don't think I could have gotten through this past year without going to the park and digging around in the dirt with my neighbors and friends, you know, socially distancing, of course. Um, 
So, um, so thank you again for uh, coming out and um, wanting to learn about um, the Friends of Bushwick in the Park, Bushwick in the Park, its status, and and get to meet um, the candidates, the people that are going to lead our district um, for the next um, number of years. So, without further ado, um, I'd like to share my screen, and we'll get started with the meeting. So. Unmute. How's that, everybody? So um, here we are at the at the uh, 2021 spring convocation. This is the um, going to be the run of show tonight. We're going to talk about the Friends of Bishwick in the Park, um, what we do, and um, you'll get to meet the other members of the committee members who will talk about different programs and stewardship stuff that we do in the parks and how to get involved. And we will hear um, from other another committee member about our advocacy and review the status of all the five parcels. Um, and then the exciting part, we will meet the um, D33 candidates, all eight of them. They only get three minutes because there's so many and to introduce themselves and talk about Bushwick in the park. And we really won't have time for questions, um, specific questions addressed to the candidates, but afterwards we'll have a chance to, um, if you wanna put a question in the Q and A, um, members of our steering committee will stay on and we will hopefully be able to answer, answer them as best as we can. Here's an overview of Bushwick Inlet Park. As you can see, it's being built out incrementally and it has um, only uh, this 86 Kent has been built out. It, it is bound by uh, the Marsha P. Johnson Park on the south and the northern end is bound um, by 40 Quay, which is a MTA wash facility that's actually not a part of Bushwick Inlet Park. It's adjacent to it. Um, we have many partnerships. Um, our activities and our stewardship, um, we cannot do it alone. We have so many volunteers who come down, but we also partner with um, groups like the Billion Oyster Park. Um, project where we do oyster restoration, which you'll hear about. We um, get grants from partnerships from parks and we have, we have a lot of partnerships because you can't grow a park by yourself. So we are, I hope you're gonna get involved with um, Bushwick Inlet Park. I hope you'll join our events, volunteer. Um, we need designers and grant writers. Um, we fundraise. Um, all our programs are funded by individual donations or um, grants that we write. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Trina McKeever, who is going to talk about the different stewardship um, projects that we do. Trina, can you? Um... Oh, wait. You don't... Okay, am I on? I'm unmuted. Yes. Can you hear me? You can't yes. see me though. I don't think. No, I but... can't see you, but we can hear you loud. Okay. Enough. Well, I will speak. So our stewardship for the last five years or so has really had three components. The first component, the first component I'll talk about is our annual. It's my Park Day Riverkeeper Sweep. And it's happening this year on May 1st. And basically it's, we invite the community to come and do a big cleanup of, of Bushwick in the park, of the parcel where the, where the soccer field is and the gardens and the shoreline. And it's the, we fill up bags and bags of garbage. And also we clean out the garden, but a lot of it's picked up from the shoreline since so we climb on the rocks and, and find what's, what's floated in over the year. And, and it's, um, it's a lot of fun and it really works. It's, it's amazing what, what we're able to do. And the other big thing we do are, are go through the garden beds and give them their, their big spring cleanup. And that's all happening this year on Saturday, May 1st at 10 a.m. And we'd love it if, if 
lots of people sign up and join us. And the other, the, the another component of our, um, also of that day will be, the, the, the other component of our stewardship is gardening. And that's, the, um, three years ago, we, st we worked with, we had community workshops um, to design the flower beds of Bushwick Inlet Park with uh, the landscape architect, Emily Bauer. And last year, we um, added more plants to it. And this year we're planning on, it's my park day on, on May 1st, to plant our perennial shrub and bird garden in it. We're taking on an additional planter. Um, and so that'll be part of that day, but it's really part of our ongoing gardening effort. And uh, additionally, what we've been doing uh, for the last two summers is meeting on Wednesday nights and weeding, starting at six o'clock. And we'll be doing this again in the spring. And it's a lot of fun and it's really necessary because these gardens are now three years old. And my mother always said, when you plant a garden, the first year is it sleeps, the second year it creeps, and the third year it leaps. So our garden is leaping this year and we and so are the weeds among it. And so we really need help. Um, we need people to come and join us on Wednesdays with the weeding. And, and it's really just really great to all be in the garden together. The third component of stewardship that we've been doing is um, we're partnering with the Billion Oyster Project and also the North Brooklyn Boat Club and in 2017, a, there's a dock was put into the, into the inlet itself with oyster beds underneath. We seeded, seeded oyster beds and we've been doing, I think, semi-annual monitoring of the oyster beds, which you'll see, I think the next one we're having is in June and there'll be an invitation that goes out for people to join us to take a look at what's, what's happening in our oyster bed and to, to count, to, to sort of assess it compared to where it's been and really see how these oysters are growing. And it, it's really, it's a lot of fun and it's also educational. The other thing that we've been doing um, since last year is opening ourselves up to different community volunteer groups that wanna come and spend a day in the park helping with mostly it's gardening, but, but doing, different, do, doing different things. And we're open to different groups and um, just days of service. And, and please be in touch with us because we'd love to facilitate your service day and have you help us clean up our park. And that's... Okay. Um, well, that's awesome. And so another part of, oops, I'm screwing this up. Uh, hang on. <laughs> okay, so now um, here we are, we're going to talk about the programming and that, and that was sort of programming around stewardship, but we also do a lot of other things and we have Julie Marlowe, another steering committee member is going to discuss um, and show talk about what we do in terms of programming. Julie, you want to take it away? Sure. So programming this year is, of course, somewhat limited, not only due to COVID, but due to uh, construction happening at 50 Kent, where we were able before to show movies and on occasion a Shakespeare play. So this year we do plan on having the concerts in the park. So on Thursday, June 24th, will be our first uh, 50 Bop, which will be uh, different types of music, jazz, maybe accordions. It's going to be... Um, you know, as we get approval uh, from the Parks Department. And then we will also continue to do the art classes, which we've been able to open up. We were doing them in our lovely uh, community center, which was a great space, and we could bring all the supplies and welcome uh, probably about 12 to 16 people per class. And online, we've been able to open it up to about 50. It's bring your own supplies, but all levels welcome. And our programming in April is going to be largely around mycology, which is mushrooms for those of you who might not have heard about that. We do have some in the garden. We have that amazing fairy ring. That's a picture we took. It's uh, probably even hard to tell that that's a ring now. It's so large, probably this year. And uh, that will be also with our way of the garden in April, which is going to be Saturday, April 17th, which will be a soil workshop and some initial gardening and probably some pruning. And then we'll be able to do anything else that we're allowed to do. So you just have to stay tuned. Uh, largely it'll be stewardship and gardening and just try and have fun during COVID. Um, 
Thank you, Julie. Um, I just also want to point out that we do the City of Water Day. We always, well, for the last two or three years, we've had the, um, the uh, Central Park Foundation Coastal Classrooms come down and do an um, exploration of the low tide um, on the beach at Bushwick Inlet Park. And that's really cool. And that's another thing we do. And this year is going to be on Saturday, um, July uh, 17th. So thank you, Julie, and let's see. And now um, we're gonna talk about the advocacy and I'm gonna introduce Ward Dennis. He's our, um, our expert at, um, at talking about all the different parcels of land and he's gonna um, let us know about all the status, uh, the status of each parcel and explain that. Um, hey everybody, uh, Ward Dennis. Uh, so, uh, you heard about the uh, hide that. Uh, you heard about all the uh, stewardship and programming that's going on, um, uh, but we still do have a lot of advocacy work to do in the park uh, in order to get the park that was promised in 2005. Uh, so you're going to be hearing a lot from us in the coming weeks. Uh, we're getting into budget season. We're getting into uh, planting season and all sorts of other seasons. So. Uh, we're going to start ramping up very soon the advocacy because we keep asking, where's our park? Um, and the advocacy that we're going to be talking about tonight really falls into two areas. One is expanding access to the waterfront and the opportunity that 40 Quay Street offers us. Uh, and the second is finishing Bushwick Inlet Park. And I'll start with that. So uh, question, where is our park? Um, we'll take you through each of the parcels, the five parcels on the park site uh, that make up the park and give you a brief status update. Um, Catherine, if you can go forward to two slides, thank you. Uh, so 86 Kent, uh, what we now know as the park, uh, is the only built section of Bushwick Inlet Park. It's about, uh, it's about five acres or so. Uh, it first opened in 2010, and now after 11 years of heavy use, the soccer field is reaching the end of its life. Uh, Friends of Bushwick Inlet Park has been pushing the Parks Department for a number of years to make repairs to the turf. And the Parks Department did finally allocate about a million dollars for a turf replacement project. Uh, but that money has not been released and the project cannot move forward uh, at this time. And our concern is that if the funding is not released really in the next few weeks, we are gonna be looking at uh, this decrepit field condition uh, for another year and a half or more. Uh, so it really is getting to the critical point in, in terms of the time. It's, a, it's about a two month project, but it takes, uh, it takes about six to nine months to put the project together. Uh, so that is, that is one of our certainly biggest priorities. Uh, another big priority has to do with the city storage building. Uh, this is the site just north of the uh, soccer field. It was acquired by the city in 2016 and the tenant vacated the building uh, just over a year ago. Uh, but the building is still there and it needs to go. It needs to go so that we can move on to remediation, design and construction of the park. And it needs to go because it's an eyesore. Uh, and this should be open space now. Uh, so we are actively working with Steve Levin and others to get money allocated uh, for the demolition of this building and so that we can get to the next step in the design and construction and we will need your help there. Uh, next is 50 Kent and here we have good news. Uh, 50 Kent is a half block immediately north of the city storage site. It was formerly a manufactured gas plant site that was remediated by National Grid in 2017. And that same year, Mayor de Blasio announced funding for the design and construction of a park on this parcel. Uh, the project was being held up during COVID, but the funding has now been released. And we think that the uh, project will go forward this spring and go into construction. So in a little bit more than a year, we should be celebrating a new piece of parkland at Bushwick Inlet. Yay. Uh, Yay, indeed. Uh, next is the Bayside site. This is the former oil depot. The tanks were taken down there in 2019. And since then, the city has been undertaking testing throughout the site. Uh, it's a heavily contaminated site. 
Uh, as with city storage, though, the city has not allocated funding for remediation, design, or construction at this site. Uh, so taken together, the Bayside site and the city storage site represent over 16 acres of unfunded and right now unusable parkland. That's almost two thirds of the promised park and that is really just a terrible waste. Uh, so we continue to push the city uh, for a long-term plan for the design remediation and construction. And the last site in uh, Bushwick Inlet Park is the so-called Motiva site. It's a small strip of land that sort of wraps around uh, about two thirds of the inlet itself. The mayor allocated funding for the design and construction of a park here. And you can see the design on this slide in 2017. Uh, the design was completed uh, and approved last year. Right now, the funding for the project is on hold, uh, but we continue to advocate for it to be released. And once it is released, it will go into procurement and construction, which will take a total of about two years. So. Uh, that is a quick rundown of the status on all the various parcels uh, in the uh, in Bushwick Inlet Park itself. Uh, as you can see, we've got a lot of advocacy ahead of us, and we're going to need a lot of help from you in terms of getting elected officials and the city uh, to move forward on building the full park. Uh, so next, I want to turn quickly to uh, the 40. Quay Street site. Uh, this is the big building that sits on Quay Street between West and Franklin, uh, just north of the inlet and just north of the Motiva site. It's owned by the MTA, so it is a public or quasi-public site. Uh, and the MTA has unfortunately issued an RFP to sell the site to the highest bidder. Uh, this is a, an advocacy project that we have been working on for uh, about a year, year and a half. And, and uh, the advocacy is primarily with the state representatives and the federal uh, and our federal elected officials, uh, not a city issue. Um, next slide, please. So we all know that the MTA is in dire straits financially, but selling off this parcel of land for residential development really is not going to fix their problems. And the trade-off for Greenpoint and Williamsburg is very steep. Uh, next slide. Forty Quay sits right on top of the inlet. It's less than 50 feet away from the water's edge. And if the site is developed for residential use, there's no guarantee that the community would gain any access, any additional access to the park or the water. Uh, and also having any building, a building of any size on that site would really be a horrible outcome for the park itself. Uh, but we also see 40 Quay as being very important because it sits at the termination of West Street. And under the current uh, BIP master plan, uh, residents of Greenpoint really don't have direct access to Bushwick Inlet or Bushwick Inlet Park. Uh, you have to go really around this building to get into the park. Uh, so this is really an urban design opportunity to open up Bushwick Inlet to Green Pointers. And uh, so at Forty Quay is an issue that we are actively engaged in with our city and federal elected officials, as I said, and we will be asking you to help us uh, with that in the coming weeks. Uh, we need your help to advocate on both these areas, both finishing the park and uh, adding 40 Quay to the open space on the, uh, on the Williamsburg and Greenpoint waterfront. Uh, so we hope that you will enjoy, uh, will join our calls to action uh, and please expect to hear from us on, on both of these. Thanks all. Um, thanks Ward, that was great. Um, and now for the, uh, our next exciting um, uh, presentation, we're gonna get to meet all of the D33 candidates. And I'm gonna turn this part over to Steve Chesler, the co-chair of the steering committee of Friends of Bushwick Inlet Park. And he's also on the board of uh, Community Board One. So he, um, I don't know, he, he's very good with um, council people and you know, uh, understanding what's going on politically. So Steve, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Okay, yeah, if you just stop your screen okay. share. 
Yeah, there we go. Great. Perfect. Thanks, Catherine. Um, okay, yeah, now we're into the second part of our program. And we're, we're um, grateful to the eight candidates for city council in our, our district, 33. Um, and, um, um, you know, our current council member, Stephen Levin, is terming out this year. And so we have an open seat and the, you know, the, the primary is in June. Um, and, you know, our district spans all the way to South Brooklyn along the waterfront to North Brooklyn. And in, you know, there are some great parks, you know, in South Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge Park's amazing, you know. Um, and in North Brooklyn, we're supposed to have an amazing park that um, my colleagues have been speaking to here. So we've uh, charged uh, our candidates with, um, you know, speaking about Bushwick Inland Park. And so each candidate will have um, uh, three minutes to briefly introduce themselves and then, um, you know, speak about the topic. And we'll be going in, um, alphabetical order. Um, hey, Steve, before we start, um, there are a couple candidates whose videos are not on. Can you just yeah. make sure everybody's videos on? Sure. All righty. Um, okay. First, uh, let's start with Elizabeth Adams. Um, Elizabeth, it looks like you're unmuted and ready to go. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth. I am running because politics as usual has left too many families in our district behind. Now is the time for fresh, innovative ideas in government. Our city's recovery is going to take a lot of work, and it requires creative ideas to get us to the future that we deserve around green space, affordability, and infrastructure. I grew up in the city, and so much of what our neighbors are going through, I know personally. I was raised in our public schools and rent-stabilized housing, and I've worked in bars and restaurants. And so the importance of affordability in terms of our housing, in terms of accessibility for our green space and equitable schools is critical to me. I believe that people directly impacted should leave our, lead our government in organizing work, and that as the district's legislative director and as an organizer with Planned Parenthood, I work to bring more people to the table to have a direct say in how we write our bills and how we pass our city's budget. This is especially important for our park and environmental needs in North Brooklyn. This community has fought tooth and nail for, North, for Bushwick Inlet Park and for bold action to, sec and to secure the commitments that have been long promised but too often broken. They're both longer term and immediate actions we can take. First, we have zoning in our city, but not planning. And that needs to flip. We need to change that. We can enact comprehensive planning, which would allow us to right some of the wrongs of our past. And we should require impact fees on waterfront development that hasn't been constructed yet to contribute to our capital needs for our park and for our resiliency planning needs. This administration's failure to follow through on its promise to our community has severely eroded public trust in government. And I believe it is time for bold action, including considering legal recourse to ensure the commitment to fully fund our park. This administration has long ignored community driven plans that called for deeper affordability and more attention to climate resiliency, public transportation and small business protection. The council should step into its full legal authority to shift that process. During my time in the council, I've helped expand green roofs and guided businesses through the pandemic, and I've stood shoulder to shoulder with neighbors in opposing the North Brooklyn fracked gas pipeline. We deserve government that is rooted in care for our communities, that will push for a greener, more resilient future, livable and accessible neighborhoods, and that will provide the support all of our families need to thrive, not just survive. I'm excited to bring concrete legislative experience, as well as a community organizing background to get the work done. This district is what I love about our city. The diversity of our neighborhoods and our small businesses, our waterfront and our open space and our culture and nightlife. It'd be an honor to serve as the next council member. Thank you. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, next up is uh, Victoria Cambranas. Thank you. Hello, everyone, can you hear me? Great. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Victoria Cambranes. I am born and raised in Greenpoint. 
Um, my parents are both immigrants. My dad is an indigenous Guatemalan. My mother's from Poland. And I grew up uh, walking up and down along Bushwick Inlet Park. I remember when uh, we would sneak behind the gates behind Biba and try and get to the water that way and wade through the tall grass. Um, and I also found myself um, as an angsty teenager going to the waterfront, taking my journal and my Nirvana CDs and listening <laughs> to music along the water. Um, and of course, during the pandemic, I also was drawn back to that water. The water is a very special place, not just for me personally, but for Greenpointers um, and for everyone who lives along the water. And that's why I fight so hard to ensure that we are providing access to that waterfront, that it is equitable access, and that we are preserving those spaces and uh, allowing for equitable access to everyone. Now, of course, uh, we all know that the 2005 rezoning created a lot of promises that didn't come to fruition, and now it's time to fix those. Um, and so the issues of the previous administrations must be corrected. And that's why I am proposing a plan called the Green New Deal from Greenpoint to Gowanus, which is not just a remediation plan, it's also a jobs program. And that jobs program is to shore up our infrastructure and ensure that we are using the full capacity of our resources as a city to provide as much parks and open space for the public good and not just as a profitability mechanism. So my goal is to ensure that we are building sustainably, naturally, that we are following a lot of the principles and, uh, and good example that we have learned down in places like um, Brooklyn Bridge Park, and that we are bringing those ideas to Greenpoint. There have been successes all around the city of waterfront design, and I want to ensure that we are pursuing those and that we are using uh, interesting solutions to the problems of purchasing the rest of the parks, such as uh, citing a new school on the, the 40 Quay site, which I think is a great solution. Uh, the SCA currently has $78 million to purchase a site, and there have been talks of putting it in similar locations, but I think that would be an excellent location for students to learn near. Um, so there are solutions just like that all up and down our district that I'd like to bring to Greenpoint, and I would look forward to, uh, to having your support as your new councilwoman um, and to bringing those ideas to fruition. Thank you. Great, Victoria, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna take a quick um, moment here. Um, we're very fortunate to have Congresswoman Carol Maloney join us. And um, so we're gonna let her uh, say a few words. So I'm going, let's see here. There you go. Hello, every, everyone. Thank you, Steve, for, for recognizing me. Thank you for inviting me. And, uh, and it's great to be here with the friends of Bushwick Inland Park. Uh, Catherine Thomas and many of us uh, slept out to try to save the Bushwick Inland Park. And we were successful in getting, uh, with Eric Adams at the time and other community leaders, we uh, got the city to put the money in to purchase it finally, as they had so promised. Uh, and uh, we are working to, to move that project forward. Many in the community have asked me to uh, push the MTA for the 40 Quay Street to be part of it. And I'm in the process of doing that and also working with uh, uh, really council member uh, Levin on the box park. We wanna get the box out of the park. We've had several meetings with the MTA on that also. Um, uh, when I first uh, had the opportunity to represent uh, Greenpoint and Williamsburg. Uh, the worst bridge in the whole state was the K Bridge. And after $800 million in federal funds, it's now the nicest bridge, I think, in the whole state with nine lanes, beautiful. And we're working on two parks on both the Queens and Brooklyn side. And then of course the L train modernization. Uh, I, I worked uh, with my colleagues to get a, a million, uh, really it's a billion, uh, to help modernize that. I do want to let you know that we just passed a, a huge package, $1.9 billion, and roughly 70 million of it is coming to the city of New York, uh, 12.9 billion for 
uh, New York State, 5 billion for New York City, and the direct grants, those billions are going in and within the form of the small business loans and the uh, MTA, also the direct grants, unemployment, the $1,400 grant. Uh, and it, it's just an incredible package. I chaired the committee that oversaw the section uh, 550 uh, billion for cities and states across the country. And right now I'm working to get vaccines with the president out as quickly as possible to our neighborhoods. Uh, on my website, you can see the, the pharmacies and sites that are in Greenpoint in Brooklyn that are distributing vaccinations. And I'm working to get a, a pop-up, they call it at Cooper Houses and the, also at Kent Street. They just opened up the beautiful garden uh, uh, store, but across the street is the medical facility. We're trying to see if we can get them to come in there. This is a very, very important election that's coming up. Uh, I am uh, going to be uh, looking at a tape that Catherine is making of this if I can't stay the whole time. I uh, have other congressional meetings and things that I have to be part of. I'm in Washington right now. We just had a hearing yesterday in my committee on making uh, DC a a state, which would be uh, the fair thing to do and give the right to vote on, in, the, in, the, in the presidential elections to the people and with their representation. And uh, tomorrow we're, I'm, it's uh, equal pay day and I'm having a hearing on equal pay, uh, how we can uh, confront it, but also what it means, not just in the pay stub where we're still 80 cents to the dollar, but over a lifetime. And the unequal pay is why women uh, make up the largest portion of poverty in old age with fewer pensions, fewer savings because of an unequal pay. We just passed last week the Equal Rights Amendment, one of my goals for many years, hoping to get that ratified. Probably that could do more to empower women and help women and children and families uh, with fair treatment in the courts and otherwise. I'm here just to listen and to support. It's always a pleasure to be with you. I see Catherine, I don't see Dewey. Uh, but it's good to see all of you and to hear the candidates. Uh, and I look forward to the rest of the presentations. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman. Thank you, Carolyn. All right, so uh, uh, back to uh, the candidates. And uh, next up is Sabrina Gates. Good evening. Let me start by thanking your organization for including me in this evening, and thank you for that excellent presentation. My name is Sabrina Gates, and I am too a candidate for New York City Council District 33. While I grew up just outside of the city, like so many individuals that now call this place home, I stepped foot here and I never left. I have lived in the district for more than 15 years, and I absolutely love it. It is diverse in so many ways. It is easy to get caught up in the problems, of which there are many like the inequities in healthcare and education or the problems of social justice, climate change, housing, and struggling small businesses, that we forget to celebrate what is good, which is the richness of the people who make up our community. This is what keeps me going, the desire to see people thrive, not just survive. I started my career in the nonprofit sector. I've worked with college students to engage them around civic participation and service, Early on, I worked with after-school programs to help implement financial literacy programs. Oh, this gave me the most amazing opportunity to see the extraordinary work that community-based organizations such as your own are doing across the city. I am running because every four years we are talking about the same issues. We have to do something different if we expect different outcomes. We have to be bold and demand more than band-aids. We have to demand real sustainable change. We have to begin with a vision of what we want the future to look like. And what we do has to be holistic because all of the issues that this city faces are interconnected. It is impossible to talk about improving health outcomes and our environment without including a discussion about our city's backyard, which are our parks. Because we know that parks help lower the health effects brought on by climate change. We know that parks offer children's places to not just play, but expand their horizons to the imagination. I know firsthand the role parks play in our daily lives and how they have helped so many maintain their health 
and sanity through this pandemic. I've had the opportunity to, to explore and hike in parks all the way from Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx to Spring Creek in Queens. Before personal challenges took me away, I volunteered for a New York City Parks and Rec program called Shape Up NYC, where I served as borough advocate and had the opportunity to expand my understanding of just how much the Parks Department does with the small amount it receives in funding. Mm, excuse me. But we are here today to talk about Bushwick Inlet Park, a topic for which I am very excited. After many hard fought years upon completion, Brooklyn, in, in Brooklyn <laughs> Bushwick in, Inlet Park is poised to be a bedrock in our district for years to come. I look forward to working with your organization to ensure that our park gets the funding it needs and was promised, and that access to our waterfront is equitable. We are truly at a critical juncture and we can walk the path we've always walked or we can dare to be better. I will be a voice that looks at city issues through the lens of equity, sustainability, and social justice with a steady eye on economics, because without capital, we cannot make our visions a reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina. Uh, next up, we have Toba Kotowski. Me, okay. uh, I'm trying to open my camera. All right, let me see if I can help with that. Okay, should be all right. Start my video. Gotcha. Hey, there I am. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, I'm going to uh, dispense with, with what we normally talk about with campaigns because I have some interesting stuff to talk to you about. Uh, I am the co-founder of the Cabinet Park Conservancy, which is a uh, my local park here in downtown Brooklyn. Um, I started it in 2010, and the reasons why I started started it is another reason why we're here today. Because as we all know, for those of us who are passionate and in love with our parks, the Parks Department is broken. And, and our next city council is going to need the right leadership to fix many of the problems that we I'm guessing, without a doubt, we've experienced the same battles uh, and same challenges in, in caring for our parks. There's an astroturf that is way too old in our park. Um, I have a little bit of jealousy because as the co-founder of the Kevin Park Conservancy, you seem way more organized uh, than my group is. Uh, and, but, uh, but anyway, um, Outside of outside of, of parks, and I, I'm going to jump back to it in a second. I am an advocate for affordable housing. I'm the beneficiary of one of the best affordable housing programs in the history of New York. It's called Mitchellama Program. Um, as 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 someone who's benefited from that, I feel obligated to uh, to work on affordable housing and uh, and programs like HDFCs and low income housing programs, um, and I certainly fix the problems that we have with NYCHA, which is also in our district and very very important. I believe in a quality of life for all, and I also believe, even though years ago they talked about uh, banks too big to fail, I feel as uh, humanity is that we are too big to fail, and 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 we we succeed by helping humanity. And so uh, that includes NYCHA, that includes the homeless, um, that includes people who suffer from addictions, but it also means uh, parks. And so, um, so one of my many challenges in, in, in working with parks, the reason why I get involved with housing or with parks is because of the deficiencies that we find in government, right? And so um, as I saw our park was deteriorating, um, I formed this coalition and uh, and then, and then I advocated successfully overall for $12 million for Cabin Plaza Park. Um, one of the projects that we that I advocated for was was um, renovating an existing bathroom, public bathroom comfort comfort station. And uh, so uh, the Parks Department called me and said, "Do you want to meet me at uh, at our community board meeting, Parks and Rec?" I said, "Great." Um, and so I was very excited. I told our organization. We all showed up, uh, sitting around, and uh, they unveiled this plan to renovate um, an existing bathroom. Um, and then we got to the point of budget, and they said. $1.5 million. And we said, there's something wrong with this. It's an existing bathroom. Structurally, we're not changing anything. Um, and I had this sinking feeling because I was the one who first mentioned the, the renovation. Um, it's, it's, and then finally, someone from Community Board 2, Parks and Rec said, hey, 1.5 seems a, a lot. And they said, well, you do want the bathroom, don't you? 
And that's one of the reasons that, that motivated me to decide to run for office, because those are the conversations that we should, we should be able to look at the budgets. And the other thing is this, for parks advocates like us, we should, be, we should be in the room where decisions are being made. We should be part of that conversation. I, I, and I'm guessing that you've experienced a lot of the things that I have is waiting for the phone call. Did we get this? Did we not get this? Uh, I'm gonna go to City Hall as an advocate for Bushwick Inlet Park uh, and for all the other parks, McCarran Park, Cabinet Plaza Park, uh, Walt Whitman Park. Walt Whitman Park was built 10 years ago. Guess what? The fountain's been broken for five years. And as we know, Parks Department has a 30 year backlog on repairs. It has to stop, it has to stop. This is part of my mission, is to make sure, being, you know, um, in sitting in a lot of these meetings, New York City ranks outside of the top 10 of, of, of parks in the, in the country. And, and people sort of don't realize when they think of parks overall and they're not as a part of organizations like we have, you know, Brooklyn is not just um, Prospect Park, right? Brooklyn is not just um, Brooklyn Bridge Park. Brooklyn is over 800 parks from the Brooklyn Bridge to Coney Island. And, um, and so, so I want to get to some of the points real quick, and then I'll, and then I'll jump off and I'll be quiet. Um, we need leadership in city council. Uh, we need honest conversations about how money is being spent. Uh, another project that I advocated for was fixing the water fountains on the north end of Cabinet Plaza Park. Ready for this? $6.2 million, three water fountains. It's outrageous and it has to stop. The, the one thing is missing is leadership. And that's what I hope to bring. Uh, I look forward to, uh, I'm getting my, my COVID shot on Friday. Um, I hope I can meet with some of you, talk more about our passion for parks. Uh, there are so many great um, uh, opportunities to bring more and more people in. And there's opportunities to bring money in. I know that the, I know that the numbers I are the, big. I know that the, I know that the numbers Oh, that's me oh, and that's me in being, um, being um, Okay, maybe that's my note to, to be quiet. Okay, thank you, thank you first and foremost for all the work that you've done. I, I you know, I, I live a parallel, lead a parallel life. I've been there with you. I'm passionate uh, as you are passionate, and as city council, this is what motivated me to to run. I want to be there with you and take you through the next city council member for this district has the opportunity of serving for ten years. That gets all of our parks, our our, our projects funded. And, and designed and, and done. So God bless you all. And thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Toba. Um, next up, we have Lincoln Wrestler. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. I am truly thrilled to be with the Friends of Bushwick and Lip Park. Uh, you all are some of my very favorite activists in the neighborhood. Um, some of the best people are, have been spearheading this group. And I want to thank you for everything that you've done to realize the Bushwick Inlet Park that was promised to us. Many of you know me. I'm a Green Pointer, born, raised, and always Brooklyn. I've never been afraid to take on tough fights or powerful interests from machine bosses to real estate developers. I led the fight against the former North Brooklyn political boss, Vito Lopez, and thanks to the help of many of you, won a district leader race right here in the 50th Assembly District against the Brooklyn machine when no one thought that could be done. I loved serving as district leader. Together, we converted empty lots into dynamic community gardens, successfully made the G train extension south past Park Slope permanent, and opened a quality, affordable supermarket in a food desert in our district. As a candidate for city council, we've been building an amazing coalition from progressive groups and local leaders like the Work and Families Party to Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, Senator Julia Salazar, Cynthia Nixon, Zephyr Teachout, labor unions representing essential workers, and many more. And I'm proud to be running a bold campaign full of big ideas that are deeply rooted in every block and neighborhood of this district, a district that I have always called my home. I've made environmental justice the leading issue of our campaign. We've put out a bold, comprehensive plan to make ours the first carbon neutral district with 53 concrete policy initiatives to drive down emissions from buildings, transportation, and waste and mobilize our community to make the changes that we know are necessary to save our planet and our waterfront community. Of course, realizing more green space is central to our vision of a carbon neutral district. It is a disgrace. It is a freaking disgrace that 15 years later, after the failed Williamsburg Greenpoint rezoning, 
we have seen all the towers get built with more than 20,000 new occupied units in Williamsburg and Greenpoint, but the city has failed to follow through on the primary promise made to our community, the creation of Bushwick Inlet Park. We need a council member who will help conduct an aggressive campaign to get this park fully funded and built out immediately so that all of us can enjoy the park that we were promised. Our demands are clear. We need to turn 40 Quay into an extension of our park. We need to design, we need to design for the adjacent Marsha P. Johnson that works for our community. And of course, we need to fully fund, remediate, and create Bushwick Inlet Park. This is my top funding priority in North Brooklyn, full stop. The next council member must invest their time, their energy, and their political capital in shrewdly leading a campaign to secure these funds to build and open our park. I'm ready to get to work. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much, Lincoln. Uh, next up, we have Stuart Sherman. We'll get you ready to go here, Stuart. Should be ready to go, Stuart. Or... Okay, yep. great. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, it means a lot to me to be here with the Friends of Bushwood Inlet Park. Um, but you know, I think you're more than just Friends of Bushwood Inlet Park. I, I park. I see you more as warriors. You have fought for every inch of park space uh, that that is there now, and continue to fight to make sure it doesn't become another land grab, another luxury tower. And you know, my name's Stu Sherman. I live on the waterfront. I'm a few blocks from Transmitter Park. Uh, I am one of the founding members of the West Street Block Association and park space is essential to the community. Um, I have a lifelong experience in public service, which started in part because of my personal experience with type one diabetes, sorry. Uh, I was diagnosed with diabetes at the age of six uh, and was lucky enough to have health insurance through my mother's union job as a public school teacher. Um, however, we still had to struggle to get the care and medication I needed, which led me to a career as a public health advocate. I worked for over a decade advocating for systemic changes in our healthcare system at a state level. And in 2016, took that knowledge of the healthcare system to advocate for folks as a legal aid attorney. I now run free legal clinics at hospitals and health centers around the city, including the public hospital that serves North Brooklyn, Woodhull. Um, my work and life lived experience, I've seen failures in housing, food security, public assistance, transportation, and every other area. I'm running to improve all of these things. But today, I wanna to spend the rest of my time talking about parks because they are just as important. Um, I think there is an often overlooked and essential component of, of parks, uh, which I know through my childhood. As a type one diabetic, I spent a lot of time in parks. It was important to maintain my blood sugar and to treat my chronic illness by staying active. So I swam, I ran, I played every competitive sport there was. And as a result, I was able to have a healthy youth. As we've seen during the pandemic, many chronic illnesses have led to people having much worse and dangerous conditions. And a lot of these chronic illnesses could have been prevented or maintained with better access to public park space and better access to places for, for activities. This wasn't, this wasn't something new. This was a magnific, magnific, magnification of an already existing problem. A lack of access to healthcare and healthy communities uh, which are necessary to fight chronic illness. Public parks are public health. And in city council, I plan to fight for them as hard as I would for any other essential public health measure. Cutting the parks during the pandemic, cutting staff, making them uh, more difficult to maintain has been terrible. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of the summer helping to clean transmitter park on the, on the weekends, fighting to get recycling in North Brooklyn parks, including transmitter. And uh, it's been a struggle every step of the way. Uh, for me, this is not just about beautifying the neighborhood, but it is a matter of life and death for many people because we need these park spaces and we need these clean, green, open spaces. That's why for me, I have, um, I, I'm a committed, sorry, committed advocate for the New Yorkers for Parks uh, Fair Now platform. So parks get fully funded and are staffed. I am committed to a sustainable green carbon neutral Brooklyn and carbon neutral district 33 addressing the CSO issue. So we stop pumping sewage into our waterways along the East river. Um, and you know, it's, it's a priority to me that this park gets built um, and that I can access it from West street uh, and other members of my community are able to get there that we prioritize this and make sure that it gets the funding that's necessary. 
uh, it would be a, a, a um, honor of a lifetime to represent District 33 and all the amazing advocates like yourself that have dedicated their lives to improving the district. So thank you. Thanks so much, Stu. Next up, we have Benjamin Solitaire. Sorry, my video. Hey guys, <clears throat> how are you? Yes, Benjamin Solitaire. Uh, nice to be here with you guys and, and see the presentation. Um, uh, I think, you know, I often get uh, uh, advised to not talk about my youth too much at these things because it was not in New York City, but I do think it's relevant here uh, because I grew up in a truly rural setting. I said I grew up on the coast of Maine in an 800 person fishing village. Uh, my, my classmates, literally most of them were fishermen. Um, so I grew up looking at the ocean every day, having a field as, as a front yard um, and have grown, you know, I, I'm a true urbanite. I moved to New York the first chance I got and I've been here for 30 years, but I understand deeply the connection that people need to have to the natural environment around them. And um, uh, I do uh, love going to Bushwick Inlet Park. Um, I've gone to, you know, all the parks, obviously, Transmitter, Bushwick Inlet have amazing access to the river. Uh, and that is something that we need to preserve. And yeah, it has to be the priority of anybody who's uh, gonna be the next council member for this area to fully fund and build out Bushwick Inlet Park. Um, it's, it has been way too long, obviously. Uh, we've been waiting. Uh, and it is obviously, you know, it, it can slip off the radar and we can't allow that to happen. So um, every day uh, that I have an office, I would be telling people to fully fund the park uh, and to design it and remediate it. Um, we need to provide spaces all throughout Brooklyn and out throughout New York. And I think I said in the questionnaire, this is, this is not gonna be a North Brooklyn park. It's gonna be a, a citywide park. People are gonna come here uh, and use it and, and enjoy it um, for the amazing views and the, and, the, uh, and the activities. I've been there when the Greenberg Williamsburg Youth Soccer League has been playing. I've been to Water Day um, and Cleanup Days, and it's uh, it's it's an amazing uh, time to be there. And we will we will continue. As I, as I said, also if we don't fund the demolition of the of the city storage in this year before we're in office, that will be an embarrassment and. Uh, will obviously have to happen. We'll make that work. So I think a lot of you know me, obviously, you all know me. Uh, I've been working in the district for Council Member 11 for the last four or five years as a community liaison, working with you guys on a regular basis and all so many other community members um, daily trying to make sure that your voices are heard and that the concerns of the, of the residents of North Brooklyn are, are, uh, are addressed. You know, we, uh, with a lot of people up in uh, West Street, we formed the uh, Be a Good Neighbor program where we require developers to meet with community members on a regular basis as their developments uh, proceed um, through construction and, and uh, even while they're being maintained so that there's a real direct line that uh, the community has when there are issues. So that's made a big difference on a lot of developments along West Street uh, and commercial. And then we hold the developer meetings uh, uh, on a regular basis. We haven't done one during COVID, but we will soon. Um, and I think that, you know, I think anybody can recognize that when uh, a project is built, if it is built and we allow it to be that it has an impact on the park, they need to contribute to its welfare. Um, it is crucial that uh, we don't rely just on the city, but we also don't want to be privatized. So um, as developments come in, they need to be addressed and evaluated and then contribute to the welfare of all our parks whether it's at Bushwick Inlet or up by Transmitter or, uh, or McGulwick. So we want to make sure those conversations happen. Um, uh, I would also say that, um, you know, again, some of the other aspects, aspects, I mean, parks are what we're here for, but yeah, we need to address in the city our homelessness issues. We need to make sure that rental vouchers are uh, sufficient for people to find real housing. We need to have compassionate street outreach programs so that as we try to get people in off the street, not everybody wants to come in on the first on the first visit or first offer. So we need to have compassionate outreach programs for those. We need to make sure that supportive housing is available in greater numbers. We don't have enough of it right now. So uh, we need to make sure that's there so that when people do go inside, if they have issues, they can have somebody there to help them and make sure they stay there. Um, we need to remove the back, criminal background checks for housing because everybody needs a place to stay and keeping people out on the street is never gonna be sufficient. 
um, uh, for them or for us. So there's a lot of work to do. We have a lot of rebuilding to do. There's obviously small business and education issues we need to address in the next council. It is gonna be a lot of work. We're gonna inherit a, a city that needs a lot of help, a lot of focus on rebuilding its people uh, primarily. We have to rebuild our people and our, our before we rebuild anything else. So uh, I look forward to um, working with you in the years to come. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity tonight. Thank you so much, Ben. And uh, next up, we have April Sambu. Um, yes, thank you, Steve. Good evening. My name is April Sambu, and I'm honored to be here today. Thank you, Friends of Bushwick Inlet Park, for having me and everything you've done for our community. Before I go into my first personal story about why I'm running, I wanted to quickly share a memory of my love for parks and the outdoors. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, and we were lucky to be surrounded by trees and the Columbia River. Now, fast forwarding to Brooklyn, when I had my firstborn, I would take him up into the, or I would take him to the ferry up to Greenpoint to visit my friend Christina, also a new mom. She lived next to Transmitter Park. We would visit the park with our babies in tow, coffee in hand, looking out at the East River. We talked about our love for Brooklyn, our joys and complaints about motherhood, our hopes and dreams for our children and the parks that hold, and the park holds a special place in my heart. During this pandemic that we're all going through, I love parks even more. Parks are an essential to our quality of life and our health. Plus it makes our city more resilient to climate change. Without the parks, I don't know what I would have done during the peak of the pandemic and today with my children. It is our sanctuary and the place brings us happiness. Today, I'm running for city council because I understand what it's like to struggle and I wanna make sure everyone has a fair chance. I'm a daughter of a Lao immigrant, refugee mother who fled communism for the American. I was born in a refugee camp and when we arrived to America, I had nothing. I grew up in Section 8 housing, so I understand the importance of living with dignity. And we were lucky to receive government assistance such as food stamps to help us get by. I am living the American dream today, or I wouldn't be here today being able to run. Professionally, I'm a marketing strategist working with nonprofits and corporations, creating multi-million dollar partnerships to amplify their mission. I'm involved in my community. I'm a member of the North Heights Community Group. I serve on the Brooklyn Bridge Park Community Advisory Council. I play an active role in the BQE Initiative and the Poplar Street Community Garden. I've been dubbed the Chief Compost Officer because of my love for compost. And um, I volunteer at our local food bank and I'm a board member of a nonprofit called Brooklyn Book Bodega. I'm an outsider with a clean slate and a new vision. Um, who has lived through it all from poverty to where I am today. The most valuable experience I will bring to city council is my firsthand understanding of the struggles that Brooklynites often face. Drawing upon my lessons from my personal upbringing and my experiences work as a working mom raising two kids in the city. My approach to representing District 33 will be inclusive of everyone. My priorities include equity in education, supporting our small businesses, and our commitment and my commitment to safe and desirable communities. In my contract to District 33, I will fight to restore the park's budget in addition to help our community get the public space it needs. With my professional background creating successful partnerships, I will bring creativity to the table and solutions to make sure your park is completed. The way I champion for my children who are my North Star, I will also be that type of champion for you, your friends, and your loved ones. Thank you. Thanks so much, April. And um, I just want to thank all of our candidates who I'm going to um, turn the video back on just so. There we go. Everybody. Um, and so no, we really appreciate it, all of you coming out tonight and you know, speaking to this very crucial, you know, just linchpin in our district in terms of quality of life and um, fulfillment of you know government um, in terms of their you know their commitment to, um, and make promises to a neighborhood and uh, our well being. So that said, um, we're going to conclude the candidates uh, section of of the program tonight.
and I'm going to turn it over to my colleague with FBIP, uh, Toby Bryce, who's going to field um, uh, questions and comments um, from the attendees regarding uh, Bushwick, uh, topics of Bushwick Lynn Park and members of the steering committee will, will address those questions. Good evening, everyone. And thank you again to all of the fantastic D33 candidates. I really loved hearing from all of you and it was really um, great and looking forward to the campaign. Um, got some good questions. Uh, the first one I'm good, we're gonna read is from our neighbor, Noel Hidalgo, um, and it's about parks equity which is very near and dear to our hearts. I mean, our group is really focused on Bushwick Inlet Park, but we are definitely uh, work across the city with other parks groups. Um, the question is why I love North Brooklyn, not all parts of our community has equal access to parks and open space. What tactics and programs do you support that will ensure that there are open spaces across the district? Um, Catherine, do you wanna maybe take this one? Um, yeah, sure. Hi. Um, I, I think that question is is so important because as we, um, you know, as we are always advocating for Bushwick Inlet Park, we realize that it's a, a very expensive proposition. But the thing that, um, and and I always like to think of um, our park as a part of a, a neighborhood network of parks, and I think that that is a is a great way to look at how to extend one way to extend equity. Um, to um, neighborhoods beyond Greenpoint and Williamsburg is to create avenues of access. And, you know, one thing that we talk a lot about is how the Bushwick Inlet is connected to the Bushwick Creek, and that leads to McCarran Park. And then the Bushwick um, uh, Creek goes on beyond that and it reaches into South Williamsburg and what would be one day the um, BQ Green. And then if you look at it, it can come around back and back down Broadway. And um, what I think should happen is that there, and this is already happening with uh, these open street initiatives, is to create safe passageways that are, um, that are green infrastructure that um, allow um, neighbors and communities to diverse um, and have access at and and um, to different parts of um, the neighborhood and and create a network of parks so that there's a flow of people and and people feel welcome and there's an access. I mean that would be one idea and the uh, another one thing that a couple of things that we are actively engaged in is trying to. Um, create programming that will bring in different groups into our park. So right now, it, I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm hoping it's going to happen, but we're working with the coastal, re, um, I mean, the coastal classrooms to expand that program and hopefully work with um, a couple of local public schools um, and have the uh, middle school kids actually come to the um, Bushwick Inlet Park and engage in the water um, and the ecology and the science and the and the creatures that are growing there. And you know, so that would be a way of bringing different communities actively into the park. Um, we also. And, and we are very, um, we always participate and are great um, supporters of the Play Fair, New Yorkers for Parks um, initiatives to, to get equity in, um, in the parks workers and give them well-paying jobs and sustainable jobs that, you know, so people can become real professionals in the, um, the world of parks um, maintenance and care. And um, we, also believe that the parks department needs to spend more money on um, maintenance and parks in general, and that will benefit um, people, um, I think, all over. And um, let's see, another. We, we also, I, I don't know if this is actually addressing the question of how do um, we, uh, our group, address equity in the neighborhood, but I think that we, you know, by being very, um, you know, engaging with a bunch of different partners from the uh, New York Harbor School to, you know, St. Nick's and um, and the uh, North Brooklyn Boat Club and different groups um, and North Brooklyn Parks Alliance um, that we can create a better, you know, more 
uh, diverse um, uh, community of park goers. One of the other things that we're doing is um, we're going to have a, a music series, and that's another way of, um, I think, is trying to diversify um, um, interest in the park by, you know, inviting different um, groups from from the south side to play and from other uh, neighborhoods and um, uh, tra traditions to come and play in the group in the park and. Let's see. Does that, does anybody have anything else to answer? You know, I think that's really good. Um, thank you so much. And one other um, aspect, um, Noel mentioned working across the, the district. Um, there is an organization that I'm sure many of our audience knows about um, called North Brooklyn Parks Alliance that is, that is you know, tasked exactly to do that. Um, we share a couple of board members. Um, Ward, you want to give a quick overview of what North Brooklyn Parks Alliance does and how that kind of addresses Noel's question as well? Sure. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Toby. Hey, Noel. Um, uh, so North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, uh, which I'm a board member of, uh, formerly the Open Space Alliance, uh, uh, is a district-wide, really a district-wide uh, parks advocacy and conservancy group. And we advocate for all the parks in North Brooklyn. Uh, among other things, uh, Katie Denny, who's our amazing uh, executive director, has been working with some other groups to put together a green platform for North Brooklyn, uh, which uh, that's uh, Friends of Bullshit Inlet Park is part of that initiative. Uh, it's being organized by North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, Newtown Creek Alliance, El Puente, and North Brooklyn Neighbors. Uh, so that's one way that we are getting involved uh, directly uh, throughout the district. You know, again, we are, uh, we represent a park in one part of the district, but as uh, one of the candidates said it, it really is a city park and a regional park. So we're very conscious of uh, our place within the broader district and uh, we work very hard in that regard. Um, the one other pitch that I will put in here uh, related to the green platform for North Brooklyn, on April 29th, they will be having a, uh, another candidates forum uh with uh with more q a we we had limited time this evening so we just asked the candidates to introduce themselves uh and we thank them all for coming here uh but uh there will be a lot more opportunities for forums including one that's directly parks and uh green space related on april 29th thank you ward excellent um another question we have from um and apologies if i'm pronouncing the last name wrong but tracy garay um will uh will can we consider opening up bip to environmentally sustainable resources like a composting site and a green farmers market um i think all of us are team compost um there are limitations on what can happen in a park um, and there's a process for kind of getting new things and new ideas um into parks, um, particularly, you know, once they're built, and then certainly as they're being developed, as much of BIP will be developed. Um, maybe Steve, since you're kind of a parks guru, and Steve's on the, in addition to being on community board one, he's on the community board one parks and waterfront committee, so he knows a lot about how parks are scoped. Um, Steve, do you want to give a little bit of background on how that works? And, you know, like if, if the community did want a compost site in a future parcel of BIP, how that might happen? Sure. Yeah, the so once the, um, the funding is in place for a new park or a section of a park, uh, that's the main qualifier for a design process moving forward, then the, uh, the Parks Department will convene what they call a scoping session, which they've now are calling uh, an imagining session. Essentially, it's a public input session where um, they, you know, they um, Gather, you know, they gather, they glean data from breakouts, breakout groups amongst um, attendees from you know, anyone, you know, from the community, from the city, to uh, basically, you know, express their ideas for for uses in the park, and and to design. And then inevitably, that'll uh, the the parks department will go back with the designers and come back with a draft of design and present it to the community boards, parks and waterfront committee, and where it'll, um, it'll be incur further scrutiny 
and and sometimes the the community and the, the board push back and uh, the parks department designers go back with a new draft and we've had some really positive outcomes with recently with the Motiva side of BIP and Box Street Park at North, uh, North Greenpoint when that happened. So uh, to answer this question directly is, um, I don't want to quote our uh, borough parks commissioner, you know, uh, to, you know, to directly, but essentially, you know, he's intimated uh, that if the community wants a particular element or amenity in a park, you know, if there's an overwhelming support for that, then they they will consider that. He, he had, you know, he threw out other examples, but um, but I think something very, you know, it seems very righteous about um, composting and, um, you know, other, you know, similar sustainable, um, uh, I, you know, areas in a, in a park, I think definitely, should be, you know, if you want to put it on the table, then come to the scoping meetings, which will help put the word out for along with the, uh, the community board and other groups. So. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. And everyone who's still with us, if you still have more questions, please put them in the chat and we will get to them if possible. Um, Tracy had a follow up question about um, cleanups and will there be a dedicated cleanup for BIP? Um, pretty much every event that we have, we do some sort of cleanup, like we'll pick up the litter. And fortunately, because the parks, North Brooklyn Parks headquarters is right by BIP, BIP doesn't have the, the same trash issue that maybe McCarran or McGolrick and other parks in the neighborhood have. And in that context, just want a big shout out to um, the North Brooklyn Park stewards who clean up my local park, McGolrick Park every Sunday. Um, so we definitely do cleanups. Um, if there's ever one needed, um, please, you know, if you see a problem in the park, please email us and we'll see about getting it attended to. Um, and uh, definitely just come join some of our events. Uh, let's see, another question we had Just was, to add that there is a river keeper cleanup on May oh, exactly. 1st um, that's scheduled, that's already gonna happen. So come on Saturday, May 1st from 10 to one and we'll, we, we join up with river keeper and we'll also be doing planting. And our steering committee member, Scott Fraser is the boss of the river keeper sweep. So he will, he will put us to work cleaning up the waterfront. It's always a great event. Um, here's a question from Chad Delk about fundraising. Um, what type of private fundraising campaigns are planned to help out funding gaps if possible? So big topic, um, and I, I work on fundraising for the steering committee, so I'll take part of it and then I'll hand it over to Ward to take another part of it. But uh, number one, just through our advocacy efforts, we're, our expectation is that the city will pay for the build out of the park and baseline maintenance. Um, the gaps, um, all of these extra things that we do in terms of our programming and stewardship, we fund via a lot of volunteer work, first of all. Um, we get a nice private donations from the community and we apply for grants. And so Catherine mentioned earlier, if you have experience um, writing grants, we would love to get you to help us. Um, there, there's quite a bit of uh, funding opportunity out there for groups like ours. So we've gotten funding from um, City Parks Foundation, uh, the um, New York Gardening Committee. What's it called, Catherine? The Garden Club, New York Garden Club. You're on mute. Um, <laughs> Citizens Committee for New York City. So we've gotten a decent number of grants and we're working on, you know, we're a relatively new organization in that regard. So we're working on getting better at applying for grants. Um, Catherine, it's called the Garden Club of New York City. Yeah, so it's called the City Gardens Club of New York City, or it's called Garden Club of New York City. And so those organizations have funded the um, work that we've done in our gardens. Um, Citizens Committee and City Parks Foundation have funded our oyster restoration that we're doing in Bushwick Inlet in partnership with Bush, uh, with a Billion Oyster Project. Um, so, you know, grants, private donations. And then the final piece of the puzzle is that many of you probably have noticed that there's a tremendous amount of development, both existing and new development around Bushwick Inlet Park. Um, it's definitely our belief and expectation that that development, which is adding so many people to our neighborhood, needs to make a affirmative and positive contribution to the parks and to other things in the neighborhood. Um, there are a lot of specifics to that. Ward, do you want to speak briefly to kind of how the planning process works and like opportunities to, you know, how we might look to hold developers to account in terms of contributing to parks? Sure. Um... Uh, yeah, so we don't 
you know, we don't think that uh, privatizing parks is, is the way to build parks. And we do think that it, the park was a commitment on behalf of the city and building and maintaining the park is primarily why, you know, why we pay taxes. Uh, but we do, we do, as Toby said, do fundraising for our own programs to supplement what the Parks Department does. And we do think, and we have been advocating for uh, developments, particularly the developments that are happening uh, in and around the park and that are discretionary and are going through city planning processes, that those should, uh, through one mechanism or another, be uh, contributing to the infrastructure, the, the building and maintenance of parks. Um, so uh, we don't see that as privatizing. We see that as uh, developments are getting value from, uh, from the park, from the community and from being in Williamsburg or Greenpoint. Uh, and we think that they should be giving back and supporting, uh, supporting our parks and supporting other, uh, other equity initiatives in the community. Cool. Um, I'm not sure if there, there's a question here. Do we have to sign up for clean up or show up um, from, from Carmen Vitar? Um, particularly during COVID, it's ideal if you register ahead of time because sometimes we have capacity issues, but um, actually Catherine just answered in the chat. Catherine, do you wanna to speak to our registration versus just showing up policy? Yeah, so um, it, we do send out uh, registration links and people sign up and you can get alerts that way. And during COVID, the Parks Department had instituted pretty strict um, social distancing rules, which I don't think are gonna be applied to too much during this season, but um, so we had to either, you know, limit capacity or we were staging people, you know, having them come in um, at specific times. But um, it's nice to know how many people are going to come so we can um, prepare for that. But if you just want to be spontaneous, you could just show up and we, I'm sure we have an extra pair of gloves for you and we'd love to have you. If you sign up for Riverkeeper Sweep, you get a t-shirt. Yeah, and you also, if you're old enough, you'll get um, a beer token for, <laughs> to celebrate your hard work. <laughs> I think that might be all the questions unless one just came in. Um, I'm repasting <laughs> all of the links into the chat for um, Carmen asked about how to sign up. Just um, add a few comments. Um, first, I just want to um, shout out to the uh, our North Brooklyn Parks Director, Mary uh, Salad Hussein, who's on here tonight. And she has just been a tremendous partner of the community and our group and NBPA um both you know partnership and stewardship and working together to you know maintain um bushwick in the park but the design process that i mentioned as well she just really uh, rose to the occasion with you know with um you know the feedback from the community to work with the designers to come up with designs for these parks including bushwick in the park that uh, everyone was happy about so just really like to just you know acknowledge uh, how much um, we appreciate her work and um, you know, working with her. And also note that there's still 16 acres of Bushwick Inland Park that needs to be funded, designed, uh, well, say demolished, remediated, designed, and built out. And it's a tremendous opportunity to create something wonderful and bring in, you know, the, uh, you know, just really visionary ideas and aspects to these parks. So help us advocate to get that done. Um, you know, four or five years ago, the city bought this warehouse. It was historic, but now we have a warehouse. We don't have a park there. So thanks, Toby. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you, everyone. All right, everyone. Thanks. Have a really great night. And thanks again for joining us. We'll see you in the park. In the park. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good Thank day, you so everyone. much. Thank you again to our candidates. You were amazing. Thank you, candidates, very much. Appreciated everything you said. Thank you, Andrew Epstein. <laughs>